Stop worrying about it. Solve it. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. It might hurt folk, but solve it. <laughs> oh, my. Hallelujah. Stop that noise, son. Does that make a noise? Hallelujah. Glory. You are the problem. Hallelujah. Ah. Can we start? Yes. As hard as it can be for you to believe, Yah has ordained you to be a problem solver in the earth. Just like we solve math problems, we can adjust to solving life problems. How about that? One plus one still equals two. Okay. Most so we have to learn how to solve our problems the same way we solve math problems. We think it through. Like, okay, one plus one is two. This happens and this happens. It means I, I, I got to do, do this. Solve the problem. Don't, don't get in a problem and this later and say, woe is me. No, solve it. It gives you what? Okay. Most of the time, we, were our, we are our worst enemy. We waste more time worrying about thinking about the problem instead of thinking on how to solve the problem. Isn't that true? Yes, it is. Whew. Declare out of your mouth that I am a problem solver. Say it. I am a problem. I am a problem solver. Yes, I am a problem solver. What is a problem solver? A person who knows how to synthesize information and knowledge to achieve a solution. Ooh, hallelujah. Convergent thinker, someone who exercises the mind usually in an effect to reach a decision. Effort, excuse me, usually mm -hmm. in an effort to reach a decision. An effective problem solver has a set of indispensable beliefs and convictions that direct and propel their thoughts, actions, and daily behavior. So that means a person who's, who, who's a problem solver has convictions and beliefs on, 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 on how to solve his, his problem. So, so they already have a connection to, to some, some power on, on, on really how to solve it. With us, the connection is of Torah. His word shows us how to solve every problem. Oh, wow. Every problem's in there. Every one of them's in there. Every one of them. Okay? All right. These beliefs are so deeply ingrained in their psyche that it will take the force and willpower of an entire world to shake these feelings of, of certainty. Let me say here, you must take a, it a habit of spending time with Yah. You must make it a habit of spending time with Yah so your mind will stay conditioned to hear his voice wow. in a situation. Wow. So that means you, you, you must spend time with him. Not just when things go wrong. Oh, you hear that? But even when things are good, spend time with him. So, so when you do speak to him, he will give you clear thoughts on what to, on what to do next. I mean? I mean. All right. The first principle of problem solving is to get the facts. Proverbs, Proverbs 18 and 1. Proverbs 18 and 1 says, He who separates himself indulges his desires and shows contempt for sound advice so, so, of any kind. So first, get the what? 
Come on. Facts. Yes. Get the facts. Get the facts. Number one. Okay. Number two. The second principle of solving problems is to be open to new ideas. And that is uh, Proverbs 18 and 15. The mind of a person with discernment gets knowledge and the ear of the wise seek knowledge. Hallelujah. Okay. That's two. Third principle. The third principle of problem solving is to hear both sides of the story. Proverbs 18 and 17. The first to state his case seems right till the other one comes oh and cross-examines. <laughs> so listen to both sides yep. of the story. Okay. How does y'all want us to respond to problems? James 1, 2 through 4. No, no, that, that means you don't, you don't cut nobody out. You don't roll your eyes. You don't, you don't slam doors. There, there's a way to solve problems without coming out of who you are. Regard it all as joy, my brothers, when you face various kinds of temptations. For you know that the testing of your trust wow. produces per perseverance. Mm -hmm. um, four. Two, two, three, four. Two, two to four. Okay, sorry. Four says, but let perseverance do its complete work so that you may be complete and whole, lacking in nothing. Hallelujah. As I respond to a problem. How can we handle problems? How can we handle problems? Psalms 145, verse 14. Adonai supports all who fall and lifts up all who are bent over. Listen to this. Cast your Care. cares upon him. A care is, is not a problem. Cares are things um, 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 cares are things of the heart that you can't you can do anything about about it. But, but see, problems are in your control. I mean? I mean. Cares and problems are two different things. Cash your cares means things I can't change. Things I can't handle. All right? Okay. Sometimes y'all can free us from burdens and problems. Matthew eleven twenty eight. Come to me, all you, all you who are struggling and burdened. Wow. And I will give you rest. Yes, yes. Trust. Okay. Trust that y'all's ultimate purpose for your life is good. And that means all things work together for the good. For those who love God, for those who are the called according to his purpose. I mean? I mean. Therefore, he knows what he's doing in your life. Hard time solving your problems. James 1 and 5. Okay, James 1 and 5. Now, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to you all generously without reproach, and it will be given unto him. If you're on the board of deal, ask the most high. Give me wisdom. And then, when he gives you the wisdom, do what he says. Hmm. Even though it, it goes against your flesh. Right. Do what he says. That's his wisdom. Wisdom. And most of the time, his wisdom goes, goes against everything you want to do. I won't do that. But that's his wisdom. All right? Yes. Okay. Trust in y'all rather than, your, than self for guidance. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 3, 4 through 6. Then you will win favor and esteem in the sight of God and the people. Trust in Adonai with all wow. your heart. 
and do not rely on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Wow. Then wow. he will level your paths. Wow. All your ways, acknowledge him. All your ways. Wow. And then he will show you what to do. And see, we can't trust our own self sometimes. Because sometimes we are mean, mad. You bad, mad. <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Beliefs are opinions that we have about things, ourselves, others, and the world around us that are injected with the undeniable sense of certainty. God, pro good problem solving are good thinkers. Good thinkers. Hmm. They have less drama and problems to begin with and don't get overly emotional when faced with a problem. Ooh. They usually see problems as challenges in life experiences and try to stand above them objectively. Oh Proverbs my. 1 through, I mean, 1, 7. The fear of Adonai is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. Yes. Proverbs 4, 6, and 7. Hallelujah. Don't aban abandon wisdom, then she will preserve you. Wow. Love her, and she will protect you. The beginning mm, wow. of wisdom is great. Excuse me. The beginning of wisdom is get wisdom. And along with all you're getting, get insight. Understanding, anxiety. yes. So wisdom 19. says to embrace her. Take her, with, take her with you everywhere you go. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. All right? Proverbs 19 and 20. 19, 20. Listen to advice and accept discipline. Mm. Oh, my, right there, <laughs> right there. You're wrong. Just say, I'm wrong, and get over it. Except what? Discipline. Discipline. So that in the end, you will be wise. Wow. Wow. Proverbs 29, 11. 29, 11. For a fool gives vent to all his feelings. Ooh, did you hear that? <laughs> a mm. fool gives vent to all his or her feelings. Feeling. This, is, this is how I feel. Bam, bam. No, uh. Don't give vent to all you, you feel. Because sometimes what you're f feeling is you. Right. So you mean we can't oh. get on Facebook when we get mad? That, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> uh, give vent to, um, Ecclesiastes. But it, oh, we're in a, yeah, vent to all his feelings, but the wise thinking of afterwards steals them. Mm-hmm. Ecclesiastics 2, 2 26. and 26. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you 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 are the problem solver. Stop asking people how to do it when you already know how to do it. Mm. The problem is, is you're afraid to do what you know you got to do. Right. You don't want to deny yourself. E yes. Just solve the problem. Ecclesiastes 2 and 26. For to the man who is good from God's point of view, he gives wisdom, wow. knowledge, and joy. But to the sinner, he gives the task of collecting and accumulating things to leave to him who is good <laughs> from God's viewpoint. This too is pointless in feeding on when. Mm -mm. So that means you might as well do it God's way because if you do it your way, everything you gain from doing it your way lose. is going to end up with. Okay. That's right. Okay. James. We did, we, did, we, did, we, did it. we did it already. Okay. So, 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 so James 3 17. 17. James 3, 17 says, But the wisdom from above is first of all pure. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Then peaceful, kind, open to reason. Hold on. Do you hear what you're saying? The wisdom from what? Above, Above. is pure. Yes. It's what? Pure what and peaceful. And peaceful. Kind. That means no arguments. Wisdom is peaceful. Wisdom is, is also pure. And it's what? Kind. kind. Open to reason. Mm-hmm. Full of mercy. Wow. Wow. And good fruits. <sighs> without partially partiality and without hypocrisy. Wow. I mean, all right. Good problem solvers. Good problem solvers use a combination of institution. Intuition. Intuition, I apologize. (laughs) Spirit and logic to come up with their solutions. Intuition has more to do with the emotional and intensive instinctive Mm -hmm. side of us and logic is more related to the cognitive and thinking. Good problem solvers use both of these forces to get as much information as they can to come up with the best possible solution. In addition, they are reasonably open-minded but logically skeptical. Now here goes, now here goes so some issues that the men of God ha- had to solve the problem. I mean, this is good right here. This, this, is, this is good right here. Solomon, King, uh, 1 Kings 3, 16 through 28. This is, this is so good right here. After this, there came to the king two women who were prostitutes. After presenting themselves to him, one of the women said, My Lord, I am this woman, live in the same house. And we, when she was in the house, I gave birth to a baby. Three days after I gave birth, this baby also gave birth. This woman also gave birth. We were there together. There was no one else with us in the house except the two of us. During the night, this woman's child died because she rolled over on top of it. So she got up in the middle of the night and took my son from next to me while your servant was sleeping and put it in her arms. And she laid her dead child in my arms. When I awoke in the morning to feed my child from my breast, there it was, dead. But when I took a closer look later in the morning, why, it wasn't my son at all, not the one I gave birth to. The other woman broke in, no, the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. Now, stop there. How would you handle that problem? Where's the mic at? Now, how would you handle that problem? Maybe arguing. Two, two, women, two women saying, the baby's mine. No, it's mine. Well, nobody there except those two. How would you solve the problem? No, 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 no. It's not. Take a blood test. You got to take a blood test. <laughs> Was he back then that he had that? So um, he'd be like, what do you do? What do you do? Okay, now look how the wisdom kicked in. Hmm. This is how they spoke in the presence of the king. Then the king said, this woman, this woman says, the living one is my son, your son is dead. While the other one says, no, the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. <laughs> Bring me a sword, said the king. I, I, uh, they brought, <laughs> they brought a sword to the king. The king said, cut the living child in two. Give half to the one, <laughs> who, the one and half to the other. At this time, the woman to whom the living child belonged addressed the king. Please, she felt so strongly towards her son. Oh, Lord, give her the living child. You mustn't kill it. But the other one said, it will be neither yours nor mine. Divide it up. Then the king answered, giving the living child to the first woman, don't Woman, don't kill it because she is the mother. All Israel heard of the decision, and the king had made and held the king in awe. 
for they saw that God's wisdom was with him, enabling wow. him to render justice properly. So when he, he, he said, all right, you just got to the child in half. The, the mom must say, no, give her the child. That's how he knew who the real mother right. was. No mother's going to let that happen. Right, and that's wisdom. Mm -hmm. He knew how to solve the problem because he saw the, the wisdom of the most high. Now, us, we, we, we be like, I don't know, call the cops. <laughs> <laughs> call the cops. I don't know what this is, call the police. I don't know what to do with this. Okay. Exodus. Moses. Oh, was that, was that, was Moses. That? Exodus 18, 13 through 24. The following day, Moshe sat to settle disputes for the people. While the people stood around Moshe from the morning till evening, when Moshe's father in law saw that all that he was doing to the people, he said, what is this that you are doing to the people? Why you sit there alone with all the people standing around you from morning till evening? Now, now listen to this. Moses had to be the leader of 144,000 at least. Mm. The, tr the, the tribes, all the tribes. Right. So the Bible says that he had to talk to, 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 to one who had a um, a problem every day, all day, because it, it was so huge. Right. Therefore, he was like, we're wearing something like, next, next. Mm -hmm. so, so his father law was like, well, what are you doing? Use wisdom. Solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Moshe answered his father-in-law, it's because the people came, come to me seeking God's guidance. Whenever they, are, they have a dispute, it comes to me. I judge between one person and another, and I explain to them God's laws and teaching. Moshe's father-in-law said to him, what, are you do what you are doing isn't good. You will certainly wear yourself out, and not only yourself, but these people here with you as well. It is too much for you. You can't do it alone by yourself. So listen now to what I have to say. This is the problem right here, okay? I will give you some advice, and God will be with you. You should represent the people before God, and you should bring their cases to God. You should also teach them the laws of the, of the teachings and show them how to live their lives and what work they should do. You, but you should choose from among all the people content men who are God-fearing, honest, and incorruptible to be their leaders in charge of thousands, hundreds, fifties, tens, Normally, they will settle their people's dispute. They should bring you the difficult cases. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but ordinary, ordinary matters, they should decide within themselves. And this way, they will make it easier for you and share the load with you. If you do this, and God is directing you to do it, you will be able to endure, and all these people wow. to you will arrive at their destination peacefully. Moshe paid attention to his father-in-law's counsel and did everything he said. He saw the problem. Okay? It's, it's, it, I'm telling you, if we, sit, if we sit back and think and not, not lose it, we can, we can, we can solve the problem. I mean? All right. Next one. Apostles. 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 John 6, 5 through 13. So when Yeshua looked up and saw that the large crowd was approaching, he said to Philip, where will we be able to buy bread so that these people can eat? Now Yeshua said to 